Eu sou o Lucas Perillo e eu estou aqui hoje no evento promovido na UFMG, o Dia Darwin. E estou aqui com um convidado muito especial, que é o Alex Rosenberg. E eu gostaria que ele... Primeiro ele vai falar um pouquinho sobre ele e depois eu vou fazer algumas perguntas aqui. É, Dr. Alex, thank you very much about the interview. I'd like to to ask you to introduce yourself and tell about your formation, uh, where your graduation, where you work. Mm -hmm. So, my I started out studying physical science in university, and I made a conceptual mistake that led me into philosophy. And by the time I figured out the mistake, it was too late to go back to physics, and so I became a philosopher. And for the last Many years I've been interested in uh, the nature of biology as a science and what biology tells us about biological systems, about the biological domain. Um, uh, and uh, I've also become very interested in the way in which the, um, the natural sciences and the methods of the sciences can answer many fundamental questions that we have Uh, that everybody has uh, about uh, philosophy, about um, ethics, about God, about free will, and uh, other um, uh, problems, but answering these questions from a completely naturalistic point of view. Yes, sure. And in one of your books, you tell about scientism. How, how this concept of scientism uh, can be used to promote science in society? How to divulgate this, this idea? So, scientism is a word that I took away from people who attack science and attack the claims of science um, and use the word scientism as a term of abuse. Um, and so I took the word and decided to defend it as a positive word for the thought that in order to answer the questions that we have, both practical and theoretical, we need to use the methods of science and the results of science because science is the only reliable way of acquiring knowledge. Um, in particular, It's a much more reliable way of acquiring knowledge than uh, uh, common sense or introspection, just looking inside yourself and thinking what might be true. The question, how scientism, the appreciation of science as the only way of knowing, can contribute to society and to um, uh, uh, social Uh, advance is a much more difficult question to which I don't feel I have very good answers. Although I know that in the history of the development of our civilization and culture, not, not just ours, but all civilizations and cultures, science has enabled us to dispense with superstitions and mistakes and other obstacles to human happiness. And maybe the best thing you can say for scientism is it encourages us to use the tools of science to enhance human welfare. Sure. Thank you. And another question. You said in your lecture about the, the Darwinian theory. That's the only way to explain adaptation in, in our, our lives and our world. What do you think about the resistance of some schools here in Brazil and in other countries to divulgate the, the, the teach of Darwin's theory? Well, this is a problem, uh, especially among Protestant denominations, both in the United States and in Brazil, and also shared with Islam, um, because these uh, religions recognize the threat to their power uh, that is presented by a completely naturalistic view of the world, and in particular a view of the world that explains human affairs and human traits and features of the biological realm in a completely naturalistic and 
physical way, which is what Darwin does, and therefore <coughs> excludes the best, psychologically most powerful and convincing arguments for God. And because these arguments are so psychologically convincing, the movements that wish to maintain the belief in God around the world will be most vigorous in their fight against Darwinism. They know, as we know, that the best antidote, the best cure for religion is understanding the world from Darwin's point of view, and therefore they wish to prevent that point of view from being widely circulated. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> and in every interview we, we ask an, to the interviewer uh, to recommend a, a work or a book or a, an article to resume the, the subject that you defend. So I've often been asked um, to name one or two or three books um, that I think people who are interested in naturalism and in uh, Darwin's theory should read. And of course Uh, there are wonderful books by Richard Dawkins, um, sure. of, uh, among which perhaps the most uh, general is The Blind Watchmaker, which is an extremely um, uh, accurate and relatively brief but completely understandable introduction to the theory of natural selection. Anyone can read and Anyone can understand read it. However, the, the point of view. If you want to read something a more sustained and deeper, the best book that has been written on this subject in the last 20 years is a book by Daniel Dennett called Darwin's Dangerous Idea. Because Dennett recognizes that Darwin's idea is not only beautiful, beautifully simple, but extremely dangerous for all kinds of prejudices. He calls the idea of blind variation and natural selection universal acid. It eats through all prejudices, misconceptions, uh, uh, unscientific views. It's, it's a book that's much longer and more dense than Dawkins' Blind Watchmaker, but I also recommend it very strongly, Darwin's Dangerous Idea. Oh. And thank you for interviewing me. It's a great pleasure to be in Brazil, to listen to the beautiful Portuguese language, and to enjoy the hospitality and the interest of uh, Brazilians. And having been here for a week, I am enormously impressed with the ability of people in the universities here to absorb and participate in debates at the very frontiers of the philosophy of biology. Professors, uh, I'm truly excited about the, our interview. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Goodbye.